Hello, welcome back. We're here with Conception, who will be running. Okay, let me get, make sure I get the full name of this run correct. Yes, please, of course. <clears throat> Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse HD. Yes. Yep, that's the that's the full name, or as I like to call it, the uh, Kingdom Hearts you can get uh, we have at home, because uh, it it is very dark and mysterious kind of Kingdom Hearts like. But yeah, this is Castle of Illusion. My name's Conception. Um, yeah, this is uh, an HD remaster of the uh, classic Sega games from like you know Game Gear and uh, Genesis and stuff like that. So pretty fun. Definitely a lot different if you're used to those old games. Uh, there's all it, there's nuances that are similar, but um, yeah, it's it's a pretty just ground up remake. So. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'll kind of it, it, it counts in as we uh, we load into the screen. So I'll do my best to uh, count us off here. Um, all right. And three, two, one, go. All right. We start off with a little bit of tech there. If we hold left for some reason at the start, um, we can move a little bit faster. Other, It skips a little bit of an animation right off the top. Uh, you also see primarily our uh, fastest form of movement is going to be jumping. Um, you're also going to see me collecting these gems a lot through the run. So uh, this is the any percent category here. So um, as you're going to see here in this kind of big over overview of the whole castle here, there's all these doors. A lot of them have chains and then a number of gems at the top of them. That means I cannot progress the story until I get enough gems to open those doors and then beat the levels within those doors. The reason why you have to beat the levels as opposed to just, you know, say getting the uh, the gem count for the top uh, door and then just moving on is because the levels within have other gems, seven colored gems. You might even call them chaos emeralds or something like that because they look pretty much the same. Uh, but we have to earn those in order to unlock the final, final area, which gets us our final boss. Uh, so first we are in the uh, first level here. A lot of the main tech is going to be involving me just grabbing the quickest possible gems. Um, I kind of have a set amount of gems that I'm looking to get with each level. I accidentally missed one there, but that's all right. We can get a, a backup one pretty easy. A little piece of tech there, which if you jump right before uh, those mushrooms, instead of taking the hit animation, you will uh, just skip right through them, kind of like what I did there. Um, there is an out of bounds that you can actually do right where I was standing there um, in those trees. I'm choosing not to do it uh, in the in a marathon setting here. It makes the game pretty unstable because what ends up happening is we skip this little uh, doorway section here where we uh, have these giant leaves that we can run on. Um, it skips it and comes right to here. However, when you jump here without doing that, it gives you 3D movement in a 2D space, uh, which makes things very strange. Um, if you go outside of the bounds of what Mickey could walk um, in a 2D zone, um, the game gets really confused. You start to fall out of bounds. Or the game just straight up crashes. So uh, it, gets, it gets a little bit funky. Um, and even if you do it, execute it perfectly, it only saves about, I want to say, 15 seconds or so. So it, it doesn't cost us too much just to, uh, to avoid it. Uh, classic Indiana Jones sequence here. Remember in the movie when he ran from the apple? That's, uh, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, collecting some gems on the way. Uh, they're in the same spots every time, luckily. So don't have to worry about it too, too much. Um, weirdly deceptive jump coming up here, actually. So it looks like it's simple, right? Uh, where you just collect all the gems and then jump uh, on the gym path. But for some reason, that that jump is not as simple as the game wants to make you believe it is. Um, it just it just isn't. But that is level one of the forest. Uh, you're going to see a pattern that these overworlds will have two levels and then a boss level. Um, whereas you might think, um, the bosses are the, going to be the challenging part of this. Not at all. The bosses are definitely the easiest part here. See if I can get this tricky jump. Not quite. So we're going to take the safe path here. Uh, the, if you uh, if you um, time your jump right off the second blue ghost here, you can actually skip the top level and uh, jump uh, jump to the lower level a lot faster uh, than what I just did. And the reason why I want to get to the lower level is because all these hidden gems here. Um. But I missed the jump, which takes away one of our health. So we take the safe path, get a little bit of a backup health so that we can keep on trucking. All right. Um, I also like to just uh, point out uh, I missed the cycle there. Actually, wait, can I save this? Uh, can I? Nope. Never mind. I still missed the cycle. I got the gem, which was the important part. But uh, 
I thought I might be able to save the cycle here, but we'll do a little bit of waiting. <laughs> Get this gem here. Um, I always like to point this out. So um, if anyone happens to have ever watched my stream, you'll probably have heard that I'm not a big connoisseur of platformers, uh, 2D platformers, I should say. Oh my gosh, why can't I make this jump? Um, so you'll see a lot of times that if I ever play a 2D platform on stream, I'm flubbing through it. Um, I'm doing it pretty bad. I remember once I uh, played through uh, Mario on stream, Super Mario, and uh, it didn't go great, weirdly. Um, but this one, this one is just my, my level. I love it. Imp Say that again. Um, it should be. Let me check. Hmm. Let me see if we can fix that. Um, put, load the game back up. Is it not just registering on OBS? Let me see if I can fix that. Properties. Huh, that's interesting. Let me see if I can just re-add it real quick. Sorry, folks. Uh, I'm just going to see if we can fix that here. Luckily, you had my voice talking, so you didn't <laughs> didn't miss too much for uh, as, a, as it goes for audio here. Let me just remove this and see if I can re-add it. All right, I think we're back. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. Uh, it seemed uh, OBS wanted to give us a little bit of problems there, where uh, audio was audio was up if the scene was set up correctly, but you know sometimes it just doesn't feel like working. So we're gonna we're just gonna take this again from the top real quick. First try, uh, let's see it. First try, yeah. You know, luckily we didn't get too too far anyway. So hopefully we can uh, get us a little bit back on track here. So let's uh, try and time this out. Three, two, one, go. Pretty good. The Castle of Illusion. Well, I would uh, <laughs> I would give the whole spiel again, but you heard me talking before, so we're just going to try and uh, run back through all this as fast as we can here. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a better shot at that second level, which will, uh, we can cruise through it a little bit faster. Into the castle but uh, that first area was already a lot the mouse with the heart of a great lion. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you ever played the classic versions like of these games, of which are, you know, a very, very, I want to... I don't want to say eight. I, I think they're more like 16-bit games. Because, uh, yeah, that makes sense because it was on the Genesis. So, 16-bit um, games. Same kind of deal. The same overarching theme of the worlds here. Um, you'll, like, you'll see we got the forest. And then, you, you know, the second world is going to be uh, Toyland and stuff like that. So, you'll recognize the theming. But uh, the structure of the levels is very different. Uh, though the enemies are, are very similar. Mickey crossed the threshold and um, and the premise is the same. The we need to get these seven colored gems. Itself. They're all it's uh this ends up being rainbow colored. I missed it. I missed that gem again, that same one. Yeah, well, in that same pattern at least. Um So yeah, we need to get these seven colored gems. Tip uh, how that executes is basically the boss has a gem. Uh, in each world, but we don't have no. We need those. We don't have seven worlds, so some worlds will have two. Just like randomly, there's a gem hidden for no reason at all. Um, and it, and I say hidden, but mainly it's you know you beat the level and it's at the end, so it's not really hidden at all. Sure wish that signpost would make up its mind. Suddenly, so yeah, we're back here. Um, like I said, we do not want to we do not want to make the game any more unstable than it was. So uh, we're just gonna take the safety route here. Oops, come on, get off there, Mickey. Thank you. 
Mickey found himself so like for example no matter what I do here uh, I'm holding left to move I can move I can hold like you know up and left at the same time I'm not gonna move up I, I'm on even though it, it looks like a 3d plane I'm on a 2d plane right now um, however if I do that glitch I do fully move 3d on a 2d plane so uh, if I move outside of the parameters of what the level sets, um, I fall through the ground and just fall for eternity. And then uh, on certain spots, I'll just uh, the game will just crash. It has no idea what to do. Um, so yeah, we'll get the uh, the nice apple chase here and do that weirdly deceptive jump at the end. And then we're gonna basically be back where we started. So no harm, no foul. Right? left here um the mark i'm looking to hit in this level for gem count by the way you can see in the top left corner i'm looking to hit 41 but i'm gonna hit 40 because i just missed that one while i was explaining uh so looks like i'm gonna hit 40 as long as i don't miss the jump weirdly no, I don't. so 40 that's fine we can pick up an extra gem somewhere along the lines it's not a not a big deal um, gems of plenty in this Mickey game. Uh, we need. To uh, what's the amount? I believe it's 320. The air um, at the end, um, there's 900 gems. So we, we do not have a shortage of gems. Uh, I'm not used to hitting that on a bounce. Um, so there's, yeah, no, no, no reason we have to worry too much. There we go. I got that tricky little jump there. You do got to be a little bit careful because I took one more damage than I'm used used to taking there. So I definitely do not want to get hit. There is a. Oh, uh, look at look what I as soon as I said that. There's a star not far past those flowers actually, so I would have been fine, but we're gonna run that part back. The very air around him. Here I thought we were gonna get a nice clean run of that, but there we go. See that that is what I'm used to. But I took like extra damage there last time. Uh, I'm not gonna even bother taking this the short path. You guys saw what it looked like, so or you folks saw what it looked like. That's a tricky little ghost. Now we have more health than we usually do, and everything is fine with the world. But yeah, I hope you guys can see what I meant by the uh, the Kingdom Hearts we have at home, because uh, Spooky Castle, you know, Evil Queen, kind of man uh, mastermind and everything here. You know, classic. No Sora, no Sora. No Donald to ruin the, the run either, though. though there are collectibles uh, in this game that do uh, reference Donald, I believe. But uh, I haven't, I've never gotten those, so... I'm going to just assume that I'm right. I think they're like cards or something. Oh, I should have went for it. Could have made that cycle. All right. So we're about done. Got to just wait for the platform here. And then we can actually jump here. And we could jump way earlier than you think. Take a purposeful damage to skip through all those mushrooms. And then here we go. Right towards the end of the level. Um, I think I mentioned it before, but just in case I didn't, the primary motion, as you're going to see, um, is that we're going to be jumping. Uh, jumping, as it happens in a lot of platformers, just ever so slightly faster than your regular movement speed. So that's the only reason why we're doing that. Uh, here we are at our first boss, and you're going to see exactly what I meant earlier when I said that the uh, bosses are just kind of cake. They're not, they're not really hard. And I don't mean they're cake like, you know, that show where it's like, is it cake, where you have to decide if the thing is cake or not. Um, they're not literally cake, but uh, they're very easy. Let's, let's, we'll call it that. So you just got to jump over them. You can do this ever so slightly, a little bit more optimally by uh, by jumping just a hair of a second faster there, but you do take damage by a falling acorn. But I'm going to play things just a little bit. Oh, never mind. I hit. I got hit anyway. I was going to say, I'll, I'll take things just a little bit safe, but uh, this thing, I don't have to move at all. I'm just going to stand there. Do a quick little jump. Oh, got hit by the acorn. That's kind of what it looks like, though. You get either hit on the front side or the back side because you just can't. If you if you take it a little hair of a bit faster, you're just gonna you're just gonna hit that extra bit. Um, okay, I gotta be a little bit careful here. I've taken way more damage than I really intended to. There we go. We're fine now. And there's our first gem. So there we go. First boss completed, first gem completed. Now it was time for our hero to move on. And now we uh we're gonna be back in the castle lobby here where we started. Um a lot of times when we head back to the lobby, there'll also be like a supplemental pickup of extra gems just to make things a little bit easier. So I pick up an extra five gems there because it's you know just logically where the door is is a little bit more convenient. And here we are in Toyland. Mickey emerged into a Toy Land is an interesting place. Um, we get a lot of gems in this level. 
Um, I believe it is uh, 52 is the total that we're looking at. Um, but it can be a little bit tricky. There's some really tricky gems to get. Not in this first part. These are all pretty easy. We're going to use these guys for movement. Ooh, missed a gem there. So I'm going to grab a backup gem coming up here. Uh, unavoidable little secret area here that we have to take. You'll notice that happens in the game a lot, that they have these secret areas that you can't advance unless you take them. Um, just just how the game works. I don't know. Oop, all right, well, we're just going to move on with the pass here. I like to use him as a boost, but we're just going to keep moving. And voila. I'm going to boost off this little clown, get that little extra health, and we're going to hesitate a little bit there so we can use him to jump up and skip a platform or two. And then here's where we get a little tricky. We're going to bounce, bounce, bounce. Oh, I missed the gem. At least I didn't die, though, because you can fall all the way back down and have to retake those platforms. So we are still going to be one gem short here, but not the end of the world. A uh, little optimization. Nope, didn't quite get it. If you uh, you can bounce off both to get that movement flying, but not quite. And you're wondering, I only have like 10 or, 10 or 11 gems right here or something like that, and I'm supposed to end with 50? Here's the rest. <laughs> we have these uh, this running path that is just basically nothing. You can't really do it too much to mess it up. The only thing that you have to worry about messing up is uh, if you accidentally like, jump over gems or miss gems or something. But uh, it's, it's a bit hard to do in this one, um, unless you're just jumping all over the place willy-nilly. Uh, last gems here. We do have one optimization jump that we could take there to land right there. And there we go. 51 because I missed that one gem. So overall, we're about two gems short, shorter than I would like to be. But I can grab a couple extra in this level, actually. Um, this is a weird section to do fast. You have to wait for them to fall or else you're just going to get hit. Uh, we're going to jump off the clown. Oh. Eh. Eh. Oh boy. Well, that did not that we are we are massively behind in gems at the moment, but that's okay. We can uh, we can fix that a little bit. Grab these two. We're still overall one behind, but I can get one extra here as well. I don't usually grab this one, but we can. And then grab those. All right. So right now we're about even. We can grab that extra health for safety as well. Yeah, so as you can see the pattern there, basically as fast as we can to uh, get out of those secret areas, the better. All right. Took a, a non-optimal path there on purpose just to grab a couple extra gems. I think it'll be beneficial in the long run. And you're, if you're wondering what are these other things that you can grab in the levels, um, for example, this one has marbles, as you can see. Those are actually just projectile ammunition. So every level has, like, themed projectiles, more or less. Um, oh, of course I missed it. Uh, let's see if I can get it this way. Nope. I'm not even going to bother. Let's just move on. Um, I'm, like, one or two short, but that's fine. Yeah, so they have themed projectiles. This one, since it's toys, marbles fits. Uh, this is meant to be like a mirror puzzle, but if you just, we can do a couple of optimized jumps and then skip the whole thing. Take this. I was going to say, I'm going to actually take that safe to not get hit, but then I got hit anyway, so. Let's see what we're, we're looking at 35. Oh no, we're okay. I think we want to get 35 there and we got 36, so we're doing okay. Took a very much slower path, but, you know, there we are. All right, now we got Jack in the box. Um, very simple boss, so we don't have to worry about it too much, but we're going to get the, uh, the orange gem after this. Basically, uh, let's see, I believe it's five phases for our, our friend the Jack in the box here, and they're all just super avoidable. I can just move as little as this, basically, on, on phase one. And then every phase ends the same with them trying to punch us and we dodge it the same way every time by just ducking. Um, now, the mi a minor optimization, let's see if we can get it right there, is that, which is basically if you have, um, once you defeat the clown, uh, the Jack in the Box clown, uh, after he punches himself, he'll throw one of three springs down on the ground. Um, and you want, you want to hope it's the closer one. And then uh, if you time it just so, you can actually get a, like a, 
a hit on the uh, on the jump on the way up as opposed to on the way down, which saves you a little bit of time. But it's pretty much RNG as to uh, where it goes, so it's kind of unavoidable. Wow, I got hit twice by that. That's that's embarrassing. Um, so you just kind of hope for the best. If it's middle or back, you don't have enough momentum to make it happen. Let's see if we can do it here. Yep. So that's what those quick jumps look like. Gonna go here. Saves us just because it saves us a jump, but it doesn't save us time necessarily. Then we can come back towards the center. Just need to be a little careful. Do not want to take any unnecessary deaths in a boss level, especially because then you have to redo the whole fight. Um, so it can be particularly slow. Alright, one more phase. Usually I play this a little bit closer, so I, I continue to have the box hop in the middle, just so it's less travel time in the air, but I'd rather stay alive, so that's what I'm going to focus on. Alright, last punch here, last jump. Voila. Second boss down, second gem of seven. So... We're moving along. We're moving along. Um, next next world after Toy World. Oop, we want to go this way. Next world after Toy World is called uh, the Storm. A um, couple of tricky, a tr uh, little little bit of uh, some difficult jumps in this one. I would say, um, hard to do optimally is how I would phrase it. So Storm One here. As Mickey surveyed this new world, we want to take a quick jump there. Didn't quite make it. So we uh, we take a, an extra an extra path here. Basically, if we time that just so, we can um, we can skip having to go in that first water section. Didn't quite hit it, but that's okay. Uh, a little slower, but does get us a couple extra gems, which is uh, which will make the end a little bit faster. Uh, stone puzzle, which is the same every time. And we just move on. Now, the thing is, these get a little bit tricky. So this water is deceptively hard, this, these little waterfalls. Because the the pattern actually... Like, as the water falls, obviously you can't you can't jump into it or you'll take damage, as you can imagine. However, the, the hitbox of the water is very, very deceptive. If there's like a drop of water on screen, like that was like almost too close just right there. If there's a drop of water on screen, you are probably going to get hit by it and you sent cascading downward. I should have just waited for that, but that's fine. It doesn't really affect too much. And then, uh, so we got a couple gems there. This next part is where things get a little bit tricky because we're going to grab a couple of gems that are a little bit tough, but we got to wait for the water. So we want to do three here, wait for the water to come down. Jump down here. I think I missed one, but we got two extra gems at the front, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, that was a tricky jump, but we're fine. Overall, an okay uh, Storm 1, not too bad. And then Storm 2, another another little tricky section. So there's this cascading water below. We're actually going to take it on purpose at first to grab a couple of hidden gems there. Oh, boy. That, nope, falling apart, falling apart. I'm going to see if another bat spawns here. We want to take a bat to bounce up. You can see this little platform kind of above my head. Of course it did. I was like, oh, I'm going to move on because it's not spawning. But then, of course, it did. Ugh, wasting a lot of time. But it's worth it because this, this box has five gems. So it's definitely worth taking. All right, moving on. Uh, then the rest of this part is just taking the wa uh, waiting for the water and then, you know, optimally jumping. Nothing too much to know. Actually, I thought about going fast, but probably wouldn't have made it. So move on. A couple gems here. Not going to bother with that other one. It's fine. Now, this section is a little bit strange, so we're going to go underwater and grab as many gems as we can here. A lot of them are in, like, these weird boxes, but we're going to grab as many as we can. Um, you're going to see exactly what I mean here in one second. So we got these, and there's going to be another three here. I'm just trying not to get hit if I can avoid it. The deep 
three. I'm going to get two of these for now. I'll grab this one, swim straight up, grab those three. I'm going to get the back half of these two and then move on. So that was actually pretty optimal besides taking a little bit of extra damage. But um, we're not in too much of a risk of getting hit um, in this level, which is good. Um, we're just waiting here for this platform to rise up. Now, this part weirdly tricky for me for some reason. There we go. <laughs> for some reason, those platforms always like to give me a lot of trouble. All right. And there we go. All right, so pretty good. We just have to wait for this water to come up, and we're just going to stick to the right side of the screen, even though there's going to be some gems on the left. Ideally, we do not want to take more than two cycles here. As you can see, these cycles take a long time. Um, and we got a number of extra gems, so that's going to help us in the end as a finished level. Pretty good. Um, and then Storm 3, uh, we have some guppy bosses. And these are, there's not a lot of tech here beyond trying to, uh, you're, you're going to see me move and I'm going to try to manipulate the guppies into uh, either a hole on the right or left side, depending, uh, just as fast as they can, as opposed to like just dawdling around the middle of the screen. Um, but that's about it. Um, I don't know if we happen to have any like donations or, or plugs or anything or just want to talk about how cool Amoeba is because uh, he is definitely a cool person. But uh, we, we got a we got a minute or two if we want to do that. There we go. So I, as you can see how this fight, this fight's gonna work is that, so phase one is one guppy, now we got two guppies. Um, and we're gonna try to manipulate them both at the same time, but it's it's a little bit tough. They love to just kind of do what the, whatever they wanna do. So what I usually tend to do is I'll hover in the middle and slot, yep, they just like that. And it worked pretty well. Hover in the middle, move left for the first one as it's going towards the hole. I tried to move towards the right side so that we can get one more. And that worked out pretty perfectly. All right, and then you can see on the screen there in the top right, three uh, three health markers left. You can probably guess that we're going to have three guppies here. Um, the three guppies is by far the hardest to manipulate, as you might imagine. Um, they especially always feel like they have their own uh, their own uh, agenda, as, uh, as it turns out. Let's see if we can get, let's see. Yep, got two there. No, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, see, I tried to manipulate him towards the right, um, and he wanted to go left. So, not as not as ideal. And you might see me here hesitate a little bit here to jump on them. Uh, you can, in fact, jump too early um, and then just take damage while they're like sticking their tongue out. So you definitely don't want to. You don't want to worry about that. At last. But there we go. Gem number three. Red, orange, yellow. I wonder what the next gem's gonna be. Any guesses? Mickey thought of Minnie. Once he had all the gems. All right, so that clears out the first floor here. We're gonna try and take a little bit of an optimized jump off the banister, head on up to the second floor. Good thing about the second floor is that there's just some free gems that we can grab that are on the way. And then we're going to move on to library. Now, these these this level is called the library act one and sure it starts off in a library but it kind of gets weird Let's see if i could get optimized jump not not fully optimized but pretty close almost if we had gone a little bit faster here we're actually going to get knocked off on purpose here so that we get knocked on over to the section that we need to just a little bit fast. And now, all of a sudden, we're in a uh, candy world. Not so much of a library anymore. Um, tricky uh, little uh, sequence break here, if we can. Yeah, there we go. Um, so the game does not want you to take that path. As you can see, there is a mysterious tail um, that was trying to uh, make it so I do not take that path. But if you are quick enough and you're quick with your jump uh, off of it, you can move on just fine. Not have to worry about it. I'm gonna. It's actually gonna grab a extra gem. Never mind. I've already taken too much damage, so let's just move on. I was gonna grab an extra gem, 
uh, to make up for it, but nah, not this time. <laughs> All right, and then, oof, my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is actually gonna make these, this next section a lot harder. So usually, usually I go into this full health, but I only have three. Oh my gosh, we might end up just dying here. <laughs> uh, let's see how we do. We'll play it as safe as I possibly can. Unfortunately, as slow as I possibly can as well. Nope, gonna take a damage there, but that's fine. We got we got by. Whew. Yeah, so usually I go into that with full health, so I don't even have to worry about it, and I just skate on through without even thinking. But uh, not the case this time. The only safe way to cross was hopping from cooking. All to right. And look at that. Just as simple as that. We got the green gem. Or did we? Or did we? Or do you, or do a heartless Mickey here? I mean Shadow Mickey. Take it from us. Shadow Mickey snuck Shadow up Mickey. behind our hero. But that's library act. And made a Moving on. Now we're in library two, which mostly takes place in the library. You'll see we got uh, some of those weird cutaway levels that do happen, but uh mostly takes place in the library. Whereas the majority of the last one is just in some mysterious candy land. Um, all right, so we're going to jump up here. Really wants you to go that way. Really don't have to, though. So we're just going to move on by. Now this, this part is a little bit confusing. And I take a little extra beat of hesita hesitation here. Just for marathon safety. Because uh, if you start moving too fast or did not get a good enough jump onto that pile of books, for some reason... You'll just fall through the books for eternity. Just just, uh, just because, I guess. I don't know. You move too quickly. I don't know what the case is. I'm going to play this a little bit safe. Really don't want to get swatted off early. Because you really want to get this chest with all these gems. And then here's, here's the part where I was like, yeah, mostly in the library. Because we're just going to go in a cup of tea, I guess. Just also, a weird glitch that you can get there is sometimes if you move too fast to go to the left towards that little T cyclone, for lack of a better term, um, you'll just go straight through the cyclone and then just be stuck in limbo. Um, you just kind of have to finish the level as designed. I don't know why I went for that. Uh, I could have made that probably. Take an extra life. Why not? There we go. I'm gonna get a little boost from the guy there. A little bookworm, as you can imagine. Grab a couple extra gems. And if you thought we were done in the world of tea, you are sadly mistaken. But it's worth it to get those extra gems, right? But yeah, we'll just take the Cyclone so I don't have to worry about it. And then we actually get the green gem this time. So one of the rare one of the rare exceptions I mentioned up the top where you get uh, a gem for not beating a boss. Because we're about to head to a boss and get another gem. So works out pretty nicely that way. Again, keep in mind that this is the boss of the library world. The licorice dragon in a sea of melted milkshake. Because nothing says library like sweets. Alright, he's going to go middle, and then he's going to go right, so I'm going to hop over. I don't remember if he goes left again. He does. Okay, so then you bait him by standing in the middle like that, and then jump on his head. Repeat three times, basically. Nothing too, nothing too wild going on here. You can, and I almost did do it, jump too fast there and just land straight in the milk, which you definitely do not want to do. All right, gonna still bait him in the middle, jump over. And then this last phase, is my favorite because you can just continuously jump back and forth and never get hit. Watch, I'll show you. So we're on the middle. 
He's gonna go middle first. So we just go right, left, right, left, right, left. And he just won't hit you. Easy as that. Wait a second. I don't know why. I hesitated a little bit there, and I'm not sure why, but. And then. Oh, I jumped too early. Darn. The blue, rainbow gem <laughs> blue gem in hand. There were only two more to find. Only two more then, to find. Mickey could search for the most precious jewel of all. Mickey had managed to all right, so you see we have 313, okay? And uh, we need we have only one more door we have to unlock, and it needs 320. So uh, luckily enough for us, on our way there, there's a number of gems. So there's we're up to 317, 18, 19, 20. There we go. Not too shabby. And that is the last door we have to unlock for gems. So now we do not care about gems anymore, luckily. We can just move on, which is good because castle the castle levels which is what i'm in now are probably the most difficult for me i don't know if they're the most difficult in the game but they're most difficult for me to do fast oh wait grab that extra health wait here a second as you can see these suits of armor some of them like to swing on you but not all of them now wait a second there all right, and then kind of, not, no. I was going to say tricky platforms, but that's probably not the case. Ooh, boy. Oh, really? You're going to start me all the way back there. Okay, well, let's try that again. Gonna wait for that. There we go. All right, and so uh, you'll, you'll see it, this in Castle a lot, where it's just these paths that pop out in front of you just one at a time. That's gonna happen quite a few times. Um, there are some minor optimizations that you can take. Like for example, I do not need to go all the way up because then that one pops up. Um, so I don't know if you'd even call it faster because you still have to wait for them to pop up in general to finish your path, but you don't have to fall into all these nooks and crannies that they want you to. All right, I should have. I should have thrown instead of jumping there, just a little bit faster. Another Indiana Jones boulder. Jump, thank you. Did not want to read my input there. Let's see, can I make it before the bubble? Yes, all right. So this is the trickiest section to do fast, in my opinion, of this level. I'm gonna take it a little bit safe by doing a couple extra hits here. Just so I don't get taken out by uh, suits of armor throwing maces. And then uh, we can it sets us up for a slight, slightly better pattern. And there we go. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Um, the end of this level is actually pretty simple. It's another one of those, um, one of these pathways up. But basically, we're going up in a spiral up a tall tower. Uh, nothing much we could do to speed this up until we get to the end. And then we can skip a couple platforms. Oops, jump for some reason there. Just my twitchy finger. All right. And then here we go. Oh, no, this one, there we go. That was the one I could have skipped if I had done it fast enough, but only loses us a second or two probably. And blue gem. So one more gem needed. One more gem needed and that is it. Miserable's time that was running out. All right, and also since we since we got the uh, blue, or another gem, can I be able to read off some donations really quick? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Let's okay. Do it. So yeah, so we got two. Um, we've got one from Psychic Champion. This is from a little while ago. Um, it says it's tw it's twenty eight dollars and twenty cents, and it says here's a Pokedex donation for two eighty two, my beloved Gardevoir. Oh, yeah. So we're doing Pokedex then, donations. Nice. So we were doing Ponex to Pokedex donations. And then there's another one from Steve TV Online that's $20. And it says, so it wouldn't be a conception speed run at a marathon without my usual $20 per day donation. Do good in the Mick Mouse. Thank you, Steve. That's one of my mods and one of my good friends. Much appreciated. Oop, we're going to take this extra safe now because I decided to get hit for some reason. But yeah, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, those donations, keep them coming. Um, 
Amoeba, Amoeba is just a, a very good person. You know, I can't can't speak highly enough about them. Uh, fantastic runner of uh, Pokemon games and Monkey Ball and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm just glad that uh, the PSR diversity team was able to come together and uh, make this happen because uh, Amoeba is definitely a deserving person. So uh, continue to get those donations in, folks, for sure. See if I can. Oh, yeah. Fancy, stylish little jump there. All right, let's see if we can. Uh, we're gonna take the. I was gonna say we're gonna take this a little bit safe as I immediately fall to my death and then hit a uh, hit a bat. So we're not gonna take it that safe, unfortunately. It's gonna throw off my cycle a bit, unfortunately. Too. Oh, maybe not. I must have done it so bad. I uh, I uh, re re-entered the cycle, just one cycle later. There we go. Not bad. Unoptimally, let's say. I'm still playing pretty fast. I can't beat myself up too much. Um, fun fact, if you go a little bit too close there, uh, that happens. You get squished. What am I at? Two health? Okay, we're okay. Not... Uh, nope. That's fine. Still have to wait for these anyway, so it doesn't actually lose us time to miss that. Uh, th that loses time, though. Oh boy, Castle 2 is definitely my most problematic level. Um, it's I I would say this jump is also just deceptively hard for some reason. But it all it's always a lot easier the second time around, so we got through it. Oh no, I'm dead. Oh wow, okay. Uh, all right, okay. Um, I should have been dead, but I wasn't. So uh, we're gonna take that as a blessing. And not a time loss, even though it was a time loss. You know what I mean? There we go. I don't think it can make that, so we're going to have to wait for the next go around here. Next piece of the cog there. And then, voila! We can jump over his head. And there we go. A little rough. A little rough. But we made it through. We're okay. Um. Mickey thought the final, not our final boss of the run, but like final area boss, I should say, which is the uh, Oafish Clockmaker, which I feel like is mean, but also he does try to hit me with a hammer, so I can't be like that upset, because that's also not cool. Um, interesting way to do this optimally, basically. So one, the, the hit part is easy. Just go towards the middle, wait for him to swing, duck under swing. So uh, what you want to do is bait him into the bells as optimally as you can without... Oh, wait, no, we still hit it. Without him doing that. Because it's very... If you just try to move away, he'll follow you. So you don't want him to follow you. You want to bait him. So we're going to still keep going that way and then jump out of the way at the last second. Um, can be a little bit difficult to do without getting hit. Definitely takes a little bit of an adjustment, but not too hard once you get the hang of it. You also could do something there, which I did a little bit, but it's a little bit slower, which is just to start off uh, to the side of where the bell is going to be and then move towards the bell. A uh, little bit slower because there's going to be more motion and shout out to me moving in the background here in a second. There I am. And we get the final violet gem, purple gem. Yeah, purple gem. You know, it depends on. Which, uh, how you learned colors, I guess, in class. I've heard purple, violet, you know, whatever the case may be. All right, so moving on, we are headed to the final boss. Just as quickly as it started the second time, we're uh, already here towards the end with our rainbow gems. There's gonna be one last platforming challenge, because of course there is. And then we're gonna be in our final boss, uh, whose name is Miserable, but who is really the uh, evil queen from no white, I believe. Um, which I believe was a change from the original. I've only played the original a couple times, but uh, I don't believe it's supposed to be the final. Uh, the final boss is supposed to be the queen from Snow White, but maybe I don't know. There's no way that old witch is gonna hurt my mini. All right, so one last platforming challenge. Like I mentioned, it's not too too hard, but it can get a little bit tricky only because the game decided to make it tricky in terms of uh, making platforms not all the way solid um you it's these little stone pillars here you have to hit these just right because sometimes you'll just fall through them even though it looks like you're on them so you just got to be careful
And then here she she tries to pull a little trick on us. Oh, there we go. By design. No worries. I know you're all freaking out, but no worries. Boink. All right. So we're in the last half here of the tower. And there's a tiny optimization that I just love here. So we're going to take a large bounce and then a little bounce. <laughs> I just love that little pink. But here we are. We are in the final boss. Now, um, you're going to see in a second here, final boss has seven hits. The phases are a little bit long, so we still have a few minutes before the actual run ends. Um, but time will be when we collect the final. It's not a gem. I don't really know what to call it. It's like a, a little, it's like a, it looks like a sea urchin kind of. I don't know, I don't know what the end game version, uh, what they call it in game necessarily. It's been a while since I played this casually, but um, yeah, little, little sea urchin thing. When it falls from the sky and we collect it, that'll be time. But we got plenty of time before that because you're going to see how long these phases take. First is pretty simple, just one of these circle deals that we could just jump in and over. Um, all of these phases are relatively easy to do without getting hit, to be honest. Um, the tricky part lies for me in remembering which side of the air arena to go on when it's time to hit her. Uh, it goes, it just rotates back and forth, so you'll see it was on the right there. Um, next time it'll be on the left, but because I'm so focused in the moment and because I'm such a, just a good gamer, um, just in the heat of the run, I forget a lot of times. It's kind of a meme in my chat. Especially on the last hit. Oh my goodness, I, f I fell through her, kind of. I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, especially on the last hit, that's how it usually goes. Um, Y'all play Mario Party um, in that, that mini game where you have to jump over the, fly the flaming rope. This is kind of like that, except it doesn't really increase speed. All right, we're on the right, I think. Yeah, we're on the right. Okay, yeah, we're good, we're good. Again, it's the same every time. I just have to memorize it. Um, okay, this one's like homing missiles, but you can't really get hit if you just run in a circle. You also don't even have to run in a circle. You can just move at the last second, and that's fine. But I just run in a circle because it's better to do something than nothing. I almost fell off that platform. Weird. Okay, there we go. Um, so this this one is the weird one. Um, it took me a second to figure out what I needed to do here, which was just to hop in and out like that. You only have to do that a few times. It's actually the shortest um, shortest uh, attack sequence for her. All right. Now, this is the last hit, so time will be coming up here shortly. But this is a multi-attack multi multi, uh, multi -attack phase, so we do got some time. First, we got this invisible wall. Well, not invisible. It's quite visible. And then we're going to have jump rope and homing missiles at the same time. So it gets a little bit tricky. Oh, yeah. See, I got hit there once. I almost went the wrong way. You might have seen I was starting to go right, but it's left. Time is coming up, and time. That is time. And that is Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, HD, parentheses, 2013. I said it in the run, but I just want to shout out, thank you for, to the, the PSR diversity team and the, everyone else who is helping out that might be outside the team. I know um, everyone is putting in a lot of effort to make, get this done quickly and at a high production value. So thank you so much to everyone behind the scenes who's making it happen. Um, continue to donate, continue to help out Amoeba. I, as I said, very deserving, deserving person, very kind. Um, can't stress enough that this is this is very important. We want to get some funds in for him, so much appreciated. And uh, yeah, if you like to see this or Pokemon runs or Bug Snacks runs or other quirky little things, you can find me twitch.tv slash conception. You can also see uh, every other Monday on the GDQ channel, twitch.tv slash games done quick. I run a show called Awfully Silly where we feature awful and silly block games. So if you like those kinds of speed runs, come on by for that. Um, but yeah, other than that, thanks for having me. Sorry we had to restart. I don't know what that audio issue was, but we're done. Thank you so much.